Hello everyone! Welcome back to another Dark Honey Parks video. Uh, I'm Mitchell, the Outreach Coordinator for the Dark Honey Park District. Uh, it is currently September 9th, and if any of you are like me, the allergies are starting to get to you, and it's starting to get bad. Now there's a reason for this. Uh, our, all of us who suffer from hay fever are all too familiar with our arch nemesis, ragweed. But believe it or not, most people don't even know what ragweed looks like, or they think they do, and they're actually mistaking it for another very common plant. And so today, we're going to have a very important conversation on the difference between ragweed and goldenrod. So, let's go find them out in the prairie, and we'll talk about each. So let's talk about ragweed first. Um, it is our, our evildoer when it comes to uh, fall allergies, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're evil plants. They are, in fact, native plants. Um, both species that we have here in Ohio, the common ragweed and the giant ragweed, are both, con are both native plants to the area, um, which means you don't want to systematically remove them all. Um, unfortunately, it means that we have to learn how to coexist with them. Uh, so, let's talk about, more specifically, the giant ragweed. Common ragweed is, as it implies common, though not as common as the giant ragweed that you see behind me. As you can see, he's enormous. Now the reason why giant ragweed is our uh, biggest problem is because they have a very fast growth rate um, and they are an extremely competitive plant. And so uh, they tend to take over most spaces, at least where there is full sun and where the, the, at least the soils are not too dry or too wet. Um, and they currently exist through most of the US uh, into southern Canada and into Mexico. Um, but its range has probably increased since the European settlement. So what are the key ways to identify uh, giant ragweed? Giant ragweed have three lobed leaves. This is one leaf with three lobes, one, two, three, and uh, it almost has a sandpapery texture to it. So when you feel it, it'll feel like sandpaper. The stem almost has a purplish hue, which you can see underneath there. A purpley stem that has hair. It almost makes it just as rough as the leaf. So you'll, if you feel the stems of uh, the giant ragweed, it feels like you're touching sandpaper. It's got the three lobes on the leaf, and it stands well over six foot tall. The shape of ragweed pollen is actually uh, really neat. Under a microscope, it appears like a, uh, a spiky ball which, of course, when inhaled, is what's going to stick inside your nose. Um, a lot of those symptoms that you get from ragweed pollen, or what we call hay fever allergies, uh, include the, the itchy nose, the watery eyes, and uh, these symptoms are caused by the body's immune system. Uh, that immune system is reacting to this foreign thing that has entered our body, uh, being the ragweed, the ragweed pollen. Uh, even though that pollen is harmless, uh, antibodies are made by your body uh, with specialized immune cells, and they mix proteins in with the pollen, which creates a chemical reaction, and that reaction floods your bloodstream with histamine. And so that histamine is a, a compound that is responsible for those allergy symptoms, more or less your body trying to get rid of this foreign invader. Um, of course, that's why a lot of our common uh, allergy medications are uh, antihistamines. Uh, they help block that histamine, they help prevent the uh, body's reaction to the ragweed pollen. Unfortunately, in my research on ragweed, I did learn that while we have all these medications that help with our allergies, there is no cure to ragweed pollen allergies. So, sorry to break the news to those of you with fall allergies. Uh, looks like this is going to be a battle that we fight for the rest of our lives. So moving on to talk about our golden rods. Uh, the golden rods are, of course, not the culprit for the fall allergies. Um, and the reason for this is because their pollen is too heavy to travel by the wind. Goldenrod seeds can also travel by wind, um, but thankfully the seeds are not the culprit of any allergies either, so we're still safe. No worries. There are over two dozen species of goldenrod, uh, which are all members of the aster family, believe it or not. Um, even though the flowers don't look the same, they are still members of the same family. And uh, one of those species is uh, 
the Canada goldenrod, which is our very, very common one that's found widespread across Ohio and across the states. A way to identify the Canada goldenrod is to look at the flowers. Look at how the flower kind of forms almost like a triangular shape, almost like a, almost a cone on the top. And as the flowers branch off, they all grow upwards, uh, not around the, the little stems there. Uh, so all of those flowers are growing upwards, and when they get to the top, sometimes they droop and they kind of form this little, uh, they almost get too heavy up at the top. This is a, a iconic Canada goldenrod look. Um, and the other way to uh, identify them is to look at their leaves. On the leaves of the Canada goldenrod, there should be three parallel lines going down the leaf. You can see that here. You'll notice the, the main uh, mid vein there, and then you'll notice the two that split off and uh, travel down right beside it. Um, these are two ways to identify the Canada goldenrod um, and to distinguish it between uh, goldenrod and ragweed. Another big difference between goldenrod and ragweed is that goldenrod is a perennial, and so it will come back year after year, while ragweed is an annual, and annuals require themselves to reseed uh, for future populations to grow and spread. I hope you enjoyed our little excursion into the prairie to look at the difference between the ragweed and goldenrod. Uh, hopefully you haven't been spraying your goldenrod thinking that it is ragweed. And hopefully, even though it pains me to say this personally, you are being kind to your local ragweed populations. Now, that doesn't mean let them go uh, crazy. Uh, you can kind of uh, manage their populations so that they don't take over. Um, but they are not an evil plant, like I said before, and they deserve to have their own space to exist. I just hope for all of our sakes that they exist somewhere away from my house. Until the next time, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, uh, get out into your parks, enjoy a hike on the trails, enjoy the color change as we start to cruise through September and approach October. All right, guys, take it easy, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.